그러면 now let us begin the plenary session two. 그럼 지금부터 플래너리 세션 2를 진행을 하도록 하겠습니다. For this session, we will have one keynote speech followed by three panel speeches. 이번 세션에서는 기조 강연을 시작으로 세 분의 패널 강연으로 이루어질 예정입니다. 모든 강연이 끝난 후에는 역시 질문을 받을 예정이니까요. 온라인으로 많이 올려주시면 감사드리겠습니다. And for this session, we have our moderator. Let me introduce to you before we invite him on the stage. We have uh, Dr. Myungjun Kim, the president of Electronics and Telecommunications Research Institute. He has led software and content laboratory researching system software, including database, file system, and operation system for more than 30 years. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome him with a big round of applause. Kim Myungjun 원장님을 무대로 모시겠습니다. 오늘 좌장을 맡아서 세션을 진행해 주실 예정입니다. Uh, good morning, gentle peoples. Uh, I'm so glad to uh, open this uh, uh, plenary number two. Yeah. The main subject is, uh, where is okay. The theme is a smart city project, impact and outcomes. Uh, and we have one uh, keynote speaker. She came from uh, she came from Finland. Uh, uh, her name is a little original. Yeah, Taina Tuki Ainen. Yeah, she is uh, she is professor uh, of Alto University, Finland, and she worked for. 12 years, more than 12 years in uh, Nokia Corporation, and uh, recently she served also uh, in the uh, European Union. Now, uh, today uh, she will address a very interesting topic uh, that was one of the big success in Finland, uh, the project uh, Smart Garden, ESPO. Yeah? Then, uh, please come on the stage and join us. Big applause, please. Okay. Mm, there. No. Yeah, here. Great. Please. Start. And uh, we have three panels now. And Yamashita uh, Chun, professor uh, from uh, Kyushu University, Japan. Yeah. And uh, we. She will, uh, he will address some uh, Japanese uh, smart city policies and some impact and some uh, ev uh, evaluation of that policy, national policy. Please come on, come on stage. Yeah, here. And uh, we have three, uh, we three, uh, Professor uh, Taina. Taina and uh, Professor Yamashita, Jun, and me, we have one uh, common point, the first keys. Can you imagine? We have a common point between us. Common point, common point. We have studied in Europe, Finland, uh, uh, Norway, uh, no, 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 Sweden. Sweden and me in France. <laughs> no, I have found some common point between Sorry, oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, Can actually the... speaking, yes, I graduated from this Lund University in Sweden. Yeah. So we have a common background, academic exactly, background. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And uh, I want to invite uh, our colleague, very close colleague, uh, President Che Suman. He was a, he was a, a high level officer in the Ministry of Science and Information. Uh, communication technology. Now he is acting as the president of uh, Daejeon Techno Park. Please come on. Oh. He even prepared some uh, some gift for us. <laughs> and finally, I, I I'm very happy to invite a very uh, specialist, uh, Mr. Oh Myung Tae. He he is working in the Smart City Research Institute of Korea Land and Housing Corporation. Please. Join us, Mr. O.
when we prepared this plenary, uh, we uh, we made some uh, abstract abstract for to describe this plenary, and I will just pick up two sentences because it describes why we are together this morning and what uh, we will address as a topic and some uh, issues. Uh, when when you read this. Uh, this uh, presentation material here here is the good sentence new technologies brought by the smart city project have a possibility to experience unexpected conflict with exist existed socio economic system and the traditional sector of the city uh, in the in the plenary session too we will discuss how to reduce the adverse effect of smart technologies and services, and what kinds of strategy and, and institutional method can make a city more sustainable. We will also discuss the role and environmental features of technopolices as a test, test bed of smart technology. Now, uh, I'm so pleased to uh, start, uh, invite Professor Taina Tukiainen from Finland to give her uh, presentation, which, uh, which will uh, introduce the ESP Innovation Garden Ecosystem. Please, uh, uh, Professor Taina, you have uh, 20 minutes. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Kim, uh, and thank you so much, uh, my dear panelists. It is a honor to be here today uh, and, and present uh, the European view. Uh, it is a honor to be uh, uh, also uh, together with this uh, 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 the executive uh, uh, group that and, uh, we have it here, as well as I, I see that here is also the students. I will present, I actually uh, present uh, Finland and, and Helsinki and Espo, especially Espo is the city next to Helsinki. How many of you have heard about Espo as a city? Oh, quite a, quite a many. How many of you have been in Espo? One? One or two? Let me actually uh, tell a little bit and why actually I want to use this Espo, Espo as an example of Finland. Of, of course, there are a couple of reasons. I live in Espo and, and I have been the citizens like uh, 40 years there, um, and it is actually the example of, uh, in the mini scale of whole Finland. Uh, Finland, of course, I mean, it is a country of uh, nature, uh, bushes and, and, and trees, and, and, and also the uh, small uh, cities. You may say, actually, if we are lo looking at the mega cities, you may say that these are like a small villages. So Espo has developed in 30 years to be a city, and this is next to Helsinki, 10 kilometers from, uh, from Helsinki. And, and I, I will, um, even though my profession is that I'm the professor of corporate entrepreneurship and innovation, this presentation is more about the case study. I don't use actually so much about uh, science here. Uh, uh, so, and, 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 and thinking about these smart cities, as discussed earlier, it is a, a bit difficult, difficult topic that what is the smart city? And I will give our view, what do we think uh, that it is a smart city? And we definitely want to have it, that sustainability there at, at the first stage. So, uh, the, we, we call it a sustainable uh, uh, smart city. And I have it in the presentation, uh, two names. Uh, I have it also our chair of the uh, council, or chair of the ESPO board. And normally we do this presentation together. And why do we do it together? Uh, 
it is actually uh, essential. So we want to show how we really work in, in reality. So we really work in close collaboration. So uh, Finland has been used in many cases as an example of very close relations with the different stakeholders, businesses, uh, public sector, cities and universities. And thinking about this area, if we look at this picture, this is the newborn kind of the city next to the uh, university and, and, and this area represents uh, around 45% uh, uh, of our stock exchange in Helsinki, which is quite a, uh, a number thinking about that it is a small city with the 200,000 inhabitants. But then, if we are looking, uh, so uh, somebody may say that actually we are in the periphery, uh, but if we are thinking the globe uh, a little bit uh, uh, more uh, and, and thinking about from this perspective, Asia and Europe and America, we may say that actually we are not so much in the periphery, uh, thinking about the flight connections, uh, there is uh, excellent flight, co flight co connections from Asia to onwards via Helsinki. So uh, it's uh, a matter of fact that what kind of a perspective we, we will take it. Uh, so this is the picture of... Uh, wait a minute. Uh, does it go back? Uh, So this is the picture uh, of the Bay of Helsinki and Espoo. So this is the big metropolitan area um, uh, actually um, in, in Helsinki. And, and in our scale is big, but in, maybe in your scale is small. We have 1.2 uh, million inhabitants. But thinking about actually our size of the uh, country, uh, which is 5.5 million, so it's representing actually the biggest, uh, um, biggest amount of the people as well as the businesses. Finland is a big country, uh, it is a, still a lot of forest, forestry based, but uh, um, it has changed also to the knowledge based economy. One of the key actually issues in, in Finland, all over the Finland, which we are very proud of, is that we have the free education to everybody. And that means that every village has a school, every village has a library, and that has actually brought us to the uh, different level uh, as, a, as a nation than we used to be, for example, 30 years ago. Then one uh, um, uh, an other aspect about Espo uh, Dijon uh, is the learning city, a UNESCO learning city, and so it is the Espo. So actually, we are in the same network. So we are very happy and proud to be here here today. Uh, then looking a little bit about the statistics, uh, I don't know. Have you known uh, that uh, we have been lately? Uh, pretty good in the statistics. Uh, yesterday there was a talk that it is the happiness a good measure for the smart city. So, I mean, I don't actually, I mean, talk about that, but I mean, we were very also, I mean, amazed uh, in Finland that uh, based on the United States, I mean, we have been the most happiest country in the world. And, and that was actually, I mean, uh, also a joke in our country because, I mean, uh, we were not believing that. We, we were thinking oh, there, there must be a mistake in the, in the statistics. And of course, <laughs> there was a mistake. I mean, uh, if we are looking, uh, uh, really the measures, I mean, it's measuring about the infrastructure. It's measuring uh, how the actually society is working. And, and actually then it's drawing the uh, feedback that, that actually affects the happiness. Of course, I mean, we are very happy that we actually, I mean, have uh, 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 achieve the level uh, on that statistics. I'm not meaning that, but that tells about our, our culture, culture a lot. Uh, this is new thing uh, that we have uh, in being in the top, but uh, we have a new issue also that we need to uh, keep the level, and that's maybe more important. 
So also in the competitiveness in, in index, innovative index, I mean, we have been uh, good. Um, but which is lately uh, more important, it is this uh, moral integrity, stability and honesty, where we have got uh, also uh, credits. And this means that uh, also we have got it, the businesses and, and international organization to uh, settle down to Helsinki and Espo or Finland based on these statistics. So, uh, thinking about uh, ESPO, so we got it uh, from the European Union, uh, the, also the announcement that ESPO is the most sustainable city in Europe. And, and that, that was actually done during the Dutch EU presidency. And, and there was a thinking uh, that uh, 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 Holland, of course, Holland is, is the sustainable that they will uh, win. And that was also the surprising that actually they found out ESPO. And why actually the ESPO was then selected? Maybe there was many reasons. One of them being that actually uh, it's based on our urban planning. Uh, the city is like a network city. There is not such a, such a one uh, city center. We have actually five city centers. So it actually, uh, the city is constructed by uh, uh, five sort of villages which are connected to each other and that's making the city livable and, 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 and small enough uh, uh, for people uh, to, to, to do their uh, uh, businesses, uh, work and live and onwards. And then maybe you did not know about uh, that um, thinking about this area, uh, Espo and Alto University, so this is the highest density of uh, how do you call it, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, IT expert after Stanford. So, of course, this artificial intelligence has the roots on machine learning and, and, and onwards. And, and, and that's uh, the area where we have uh, concentrated heavily uh, in, in uh, uh, area. And then uh, this Alto University, which is uh, the uh, new university with the old remits. So it is the university, uh, uh, Helsinki University of Technology, Helsinki School of Business and Helsinki School of Arts. They were merging together and that uh, uh, came the new remits of the new university 10 years ago. And now we are actually getting um, uh, the, uh, the fruits out of that. It means that we are international, uh, we have uh, programs in English, and then also uh, there is a possibility for students to study different disciplines between these uh, different schools. Uh, it's Im important, uh, actually, uh, I talked about the education. So education in all levels, it, it's Im important. Uh, topic and one of the cornerstones in our educational systems also in the university it is that it's student driven uh, meaning that the philosophy of our thinking is that uh, uh, the students will be the game changers of the future and they should actually uh, learn and, and, and in real life context the, about the issues and we need to give the floor, we need to give the opportunity uh, for the students to flourish and also solve the uh, trans-societal challenges. So uh, uh, that's the important part that uh, early, from early beginning, even from the kindergarten, that actually uh, we are uh, having the responsibility of the, of the responsibility of ourselves, but also about the others. Uh, thinking about uh, the ESPO, the city of ESPO uh, have had a, a sustainable uh, ESPO program over 10 years. Um, and actually that's together with the uh, uh, people, together with the uh, businesses. They, have, they say it that make with ESPO, uh, that's the slogan. And that means that uh, 
taking ev everybody uh, to develop uh, uh, the story. And that, that the city council is behind of that. And of course, all the civil servants are working for that. Of course, our uh, tradition uh, comes from uh, uh, the Nordic tradition that uh, uh, in urban planning, in everything, that you, uh, uh, you have a citizen consultation in everything that you do, and you should have it. But this goes even uh, further uh, of these uh, citizen consultations. It means that voluntarily basis, citizens and businesses can be in schools. Uh, we had a huge debate about the, uh, as an example, about the schools. Can we take it businesses with? That's the Nordic uh, uh, tradition. Uh, and which businesses can be in? But uh, it, it's solved. And, and the businesses, of course, you need to be the respective, you need to have uh, um, uh, the honesty uh, that it is for the children, it is for the uh, uh, learning purposes, uh, and, and, and businesses are, are in elementary school, high school, kindergartens, I mean, uh, um, then uh, giving uh, their response to the society. This is the new thing compared to the United States, so uh, different um, other parts of the Europe um, in, in Nordics. In Nordics it was separated so that businesses and publics were different, but uh, now there is, I mean, coming and coming and, 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 and do, um, in the coming a lot of collaboration. This is the story. So uh, uh, the city actually uh, builds the story with the residents. And in, 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 in brief, there's a lot of issues, but actually the, uh, here uh, it is uh, mentioned about these partnerships and, and, and definitely the biggest issue is the sustainability. So the city wants to be the sustainable by 20 to 25, which means a lot of partnerships, strategic, operational and onwards with the businesses, with the international bodies and onwards. Uh, and, and this Make with Espo, it's a, a co-developing uh, program uh, with the communities. So a uh, similar kind, I think, I, it, it is actually uh, in, in the other cities. It was wonderful to hear the stories, I mean, like the Brisbane a bit earlier. Uh, actually, there are lots of similarities, I mean, with the Brisbane uh, about, I mean, the thinking um, recognized actually uh, uh, from the previous presentation. Uh, then uh, there is also uh, the new thing in our context that um, the city officials, they are taking part as a group in the executive MBA earlier on, uh, that was not the case. So uh, city officials had it, they actually uh, education, but uh, they did not take it, this lifelong learning um, kind of the uh, thinking uh, so further. But now actually uh, they, uh, they do, and there was uh, even the question uh, from the mayor that you are investing millions <laughs> To, the, to your uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, so how come you are using taxpayers' money? And, and then he responded that, uh, please think about if I don't do it, what happens? So actually that uh, 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 um, made the discussion uh, actually very clear. So we need to be actually uh, uh, all the time developing, we need to uh, have the lifelong learning in our thinking in everywhere, uh, so that's the clear case. Uh, then uh, we have a couple of cases, but I don't go very deeper, uh, so this is the area, uh, new area that um, it is uh, developed uh, to the one of the Nokia 
uh, surroundings and this is 5G environment where there is uh, tested and piloted different kind of the 5G applications but in addition also data uh, platform uh, connectivity platform that's pretty clear it's very simple and onwards but we, we don't have yet understanding properly how this uh, uh, connect uh, data platforms are uh, working in the city environments. But this is something that actually we should do together. So this needs to be global. Uh, uh, none of the cities has uh, uh, cap cap capacity actually uh, to do it alone. Uh, then about the carbon neutrality, this is the one of the uh, journey uh, that um, uh, our biggest uh, Nordics uh, in, in energy company, Fortum is the name, is doing in the carbon neutrality um, uh, in, in Espo, but they are doing also in other cities because, I mean, this is... Um, about the district heating systems, so they will be uh, they, they have promised together with the city and with the different business holders that the city will be carbon neutral by 20 to 25. So there's still a couple of years to go, but there's lots of activities started for, to uh, to reach the target. And, and, and then uh, about actually uh, these experiences, because these are the experiences we have uh, written together, I mean, a couple of books, but this is one book that we uh, did it together with the other colleagues in the European Union. And, and, and this is the book about regional innovation ecosystems. Uh, there are small stories about 30 cities in Europe and they are telling actually their story that how they are pioneering. Our thinking is that every city can be pioneering. It only depends that you select where you want to be and, and then actually you set the target and, and, and then uh, you, you show how uh, uh, you uh, reach the target. Uh, of course, the bench learning, as discussed, it's extremely uh, important and we also uh, talked about bench acting, so acting together uh, uh, in, in European, le European level, uh, but it is also in the global level, very uh, important to learn from each others and then actually uh, also work, work together. Uh, th this publication, I don't go deeper, is also uh, published uh, uh, about the eco this ecosystem, this uh, Espo Alto ecosystem. And here, actually, the one of the key, uh, key issue was that the, they saw the uh, very important role of the university um, uh, in, in, in this context. And, and the university, and in, in our case, it has had an effect uh, for many businesses. Actually, if you look a bit past, I mean, the businesses that has been developed in our country in nearly everything, actually, the university has been somehow involved in many cases, even uh, being uh, the key uh, 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 contributor. Uh, and, Hi, no. and you have spent almost your 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. You thank have you, another five minutes. Okay, uh, so I will actually soon uh, close my presentation. So uh, uh, the university is innovative and entrepreneurial. And, 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 and now actually, I mean, um, somebody said that, I mean, this is the really also the sustainab sustainable university and we have even the slogan that towards a better world and it's not the slogan, it is really matters that actually we do that, uh, think and, and act in every operations that we do. So maybe uh, uh, I, I close my presentation uh, um, with the two slides. Uh, the one is here uh, talking about innovation camps, uh, meaning that you, uh, together with your partners, uh, you actually brainstorm the challenges together. And this is one example about uh, our metro extension, uh, that we had it international uh, partners, I mean, to uh, make the solution together three days, and then we take it further uh, onwards. Uh, this is the last, sla last slide that I use in this presentation. I wanted to, um, uh, uh, co to conclude. Uh, in European level, uh, in this collaboration, 
there has been the city challenge um, where actually I mean, middle-sized cities has been uh, called uh, to collaborate together and also developed uh, uh, the intelligent cities or digital cities. And now the challenge is actually further um, uh, enlarged uh, to call it to, uh, for 100 intelligent cities uh, to, to, to develop their challenges. And, and also there is actually in these cities uh, uh, the European, but also the outside of Europe, the cities, uh, the forerunners and, and later comers, which is very important. And here, the three points that are actually, I mean, here down are, are from our uh, European Commission uh, president elected, Ursula von der Leyen. He has put the priority for Europe, uh, three issues. At first is the European Green Deal, that actually we manage on that Green Deal. And, and that the economy, that it works for the people in Europe. Uh, people has not been the key focus, I mean, uh, uh, in the last mandate. And then uh, it is uh, also of, of this digitality, so that the Europe fits to the digital age. And, and these are the key targets, and, and it seems to be seen that actually how this will be tackled, what are the actions to be taken. So Commission are not yet actually um, uh, full in action, but it will be, I mean, in the beginning of next year. So uh, there will be focus on, on these issues. Thank you so much, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy I, I will be here for the, uh, for the questions uh, later. Thank you so much. Good, good. Thank you, Taina, for, for your nice and beautiful presentation. <laughs> Please take your seat. And now uh, uh, I would like to invite Professor Yamashita Chun from Kyushu University, and he will uh, present the outcome and the impact of a smart city project in Japan. Please. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, conf uh, to this uh, uh, Global Innovation Forum today. So I would like to express my gratitude to all concerned. So what I want to talk about today is the outcome and impact of smart city policies in Japan. I would be uh, quite uh, delighted if I would share experiences derived from these policies uh, with you today. So this table summarizes uh, smart city policies in Japan since 2008. So these policies might be divided into two parts, namely the first and second generations of smart city policies before and after 2016. In this year, the uh, central government presents a concept called Society 5.0, I briefly mention this concept later. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, the first generation of smart city policy was started from 2008. In this year, the cabinet office presented the ECHO model and the Future City Initiative. And two years later, namely 2010, the Agency for Natural Resources and Energy launch the next generation energy and society system demonstration project. It's quite a long title. So, but both projects belong to the first generation of smart city policy, but feature of two projects were different. The former was um, environmental sustainability oriented, and while the latter was smart or ICT oriented. So I focus on the latter regarding policy outcomes and impact because it's feature. So objective of the policy outcomes and impact were the 
four cities showing this light. And the purpose of today's presentation is twofold, showing this one. This one, um, the one is to identify outcome delivered from the smart city project in first generation. And uh, the other is to reveal impact of the first generation on the second one of smart city policies. So I evaluated the policy outcome, outputs and outcomes in the following way. Regarding the policy output, the numerical target showing this table was utilized. And on the other hand, a technological transfer to other cities and other countries were employed as uh, policy outcomes. So this table shows both the numerical target and achievement. In this table, we easily understand that numerical target were largely achieved. So this indicates these projects are successful regarding the policy output. And this table shows technological transfer to city, not only in Japan, but also overseas. We also easily understand that uh, project was successful regarding uh, policy outcome. So before I talk about the policy impact, I would like to briefly mention the current challenges that Japan is facing. Namely, these changes are aging and shrinking population, showing in the figure on the left-hand side, and urban infrastructure, aging of urban infrastructure, infra infrastructure showing in the uh, figure on the right-hand right -hand side. So to overwhelm these uh, challenges, increase in productivity is a key issue. So and the use of ICTs could increase the productivity to respond to such challenges. So to enhance ICT-based society, Japanese government created one concept termed as the Society 5.0. The definition is concept is shown in this slide, and the, the key feature of this concept is the human wealth using the ICT. The Society 5.1 or 5.0 is similar to the other concept of the fifth industry revolution based on the ICTs. So like the Industry 4.0 was the Advanced Manufacturing Partnership and so on. So now I'll focus on the policy impacts. The important element of learning from the first generation of sustainable city policies was the lack of data sharing and utilization over different public services, namely the silos. So the policy impact of the first generation of smart city policy on the second one was the establishment of smart city platforms because the platform breached such silos. So an example of a platform-based smart city project was the smart city model project launched by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism this year. So as shown in this figure, 38 cities were designated for the smart city model project. Although this project is ongoing, the experience of this smart city model projects are intended to be shared not only in Japan, but also in the international scene, namely the Global Smart City Alliance established this month, this year. So regarding the data sharing and utilization, the many platforms for smart cities were, has been created. In Japan, the fiveware 
showing in the figure on the left-hand side, is often used as a platform for smart cities. So Takamatsu City is a front runner of the five-way based platform. This city has given a test bed for the platform, a five-year platform, since 2017 in two public, sec uh, public service sector of tourism uh, promotion and disaster management. However, none of the 38 cities applied the five-year platform for environmentally sustainability. That's a problem. So time is running out, so now I wrap up my presentation. For the aforementioned two purposes, that I could draw two uh, concluding remarks showing this slide. So regarding next steps, as I mentioned in the previous slide, utilization of platform for environmentally smart cities still left behind for the second generation of smart city policies in Japan. So how to share and utilize data among silos for environmental issues like global uh, green gas emission reduction should be implemented in the near future of smart city policies. So that's for my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I, would, I kindly invite you, audience, to uh, make your questions on, through the same floor because I haven't until now any questions. Yeah. <laughs> 그 한국 분들 질문을 해 주시면은 한국말로 질문해 주시면 제가 영어로 번역할 수 있으니까 활발하게 발표한 거에 대해서 질문 좀해 주세요. 네, 오케이. 컴백 투 유. 감사합니다. 네, 감사합니다. 그리고 이제 아 아, 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 10 <laughs> okay, now uh, I will invite uh, Mr. Che Suman. He will address the, the uh, smart city Taejeon right now, please. Uh, good morning, everybody. Are you wake up? Who, everybody who wake up, raise your hand. Okay, thank you. I will give you some keys about the smart city and also the Daejeon metropolitan city. And then very easy keys. So if you raise your WTA, raise your hand, and I will give you a small gift for you. Yeah. OK? Everybody, the members of the WTA is OK. The Koreans, except. OK? Yeah. OK. This is the exercise. OK. <laughs> what is this? What? WTA. WTA. OK. Gentlemen, behind. Okay, what is this? Butterfly. Big proud, please. Thank you. <laughs> this is traditional. The this is for beautiful some. This. And also, what is the meaning of the butterfly? What is the butterfly effect? What is the butterfly effect? WT, WT. The not Korean. The WT members, please. What is the meaning of the butterfly effect? WT. Do you know? Nectar. Nectar. What? Flame. 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 How about this guy? Beauty and colorful. Beauty and colorful. Thank. <laughs> anyway, not right answer. What is the meaning of the butterfly? Okay. Gentlemen. What is For pollination, cross pollination. Pollination. Yes. Pollination. How about that gentleman? What is the meaning of the butterfly? 
uh, that sometimes introducing a small input at the right time can drive a big change. Big change. Why don't you pick Cloud, please? Okay, come on. Come, follow me. Okay, anyway, let's go on. This traditional fan, if you are hot, why don't you use, why don't you be plowed? Okay, let's go. Tiger butterfly. What is this one? WT. What is this map? What is this map? The name of the city. Daejeon. Okay. Why don't you people out? Come. Daejeon. I will give you Daejeon maps. <laughs> but this is more than 40 national lab and the big companies maps. Okay. I will give this all kinds of national lab. We can co-work together. Okay. Okay, why don't you big cloud, please? Yeah. So Dezen is very famous, like the, the tiger butterflies. And then this is tiger butterflies. And what is the name of the, my the agent's name? What is my agent's name? Belong to the Techno Park. Come, please, Techno Park. This is our bio healthcare company's product for ladies and women, and also gentlemen, and then the cosmetic. Okay, thank you. So, my agency is Techno Park. Park means always happiness and family get together and fun and safety. And also, I want to show the R&D Park, that's a national lab, more than 40. Uh, laboratory is there, and also military park. Oh, so. Military park, Navy, Army, and also Air Force there, headquarters there. Very safety city in Dezon. Dezon is very safety, as you know. And also the academic park. In this area, we have 20 universities and colleges. And also industry park, and we have a KTX and R. Uh, that's the very fast train there. And we are uh, planning to hyperloop, hype tube, so you can reach uh, Europe and also other continent. So that's the the main project of in Tejon, and also the other citizens park, and also this is government and public park. That means the central government. More than 10 central government offices here. So we have very the collaborative and also very uh, selective and very special uh, cities. So the butterfly effect like this. If you work together, Dejon Metropolitan and Techno Park, we can share our the experience and also our smart city experience. All members of the WTA. And then, what is the smartest that it enriches citizens' lives? That's the Dejon Metropolitan Smart Cities philosophy of the smart city. That's the, we have the national first smart city establishment of five citizens, safety, that's the convergence service there. I will show you this one. The citizens' safety and well-being is the most important thing in Daejeon Smart City. So we have a five, the safety, the convergence service there. So we have the police service and also 911 service, fire, and also the, some social welfare and other things. So if you have, a, that's the real time, the reach out and then the action real time. So that's the very interesting and very effective and uh, efficient the public service and also social welfare service, all together in Daejeon Smart City, the services. And also this is the, the precise, the explain. You can share this one and then we will work like this. 
UCT is a ubiquitous city. Now, smart city is going upgrade and upgrade. And also, citizens' experience service and data-driven city operation. We have a KAIST and ATRI. We have a, uh, advanced technology and get together and data-driven city. So ARE and data and IoT get together. And also, we solve, we solve the urban problem and desert cities. If you work together, you can share these kinds of uh, the full services. And also, this is a kind of uh, the concept, the maps. And then so, ah, that's the same one. So this is my uh, presentation. Why don't you work together? And already, if you catch the tiger butterfly, that means in Korean old saying, that's you catch is happiness, fun, lucky. So you have already catch the happiness and luck because you are in Daejeon right now. And WTA members, we work together and get together, go together. Okay, thank you. It's very original presentation for me. <laughs> anyway, uh, I will invite to the last panelist, uh, Mr. Oh Myung Tak. Yeah. Uh, he will present in, uh, his idea in Korean, so the foreign uh, participant could uh, use the translator to listen his presentation, please. 안녕하세요. LH 연구원의 오명택이라고 합니다. 어, 오늘 스마트 시티 성과와 그 결과에 대해서 어떤 얘기를 할까 사전에 이렇게 언질 들었을 때 무슨 얘기를 할까 대해서 고민을 좀 많이 했는데요. 전체적으로 이제 핀란드에서 어떤 결과를 했었는지 그리고 일본에서 어떤 얘기들을 했는지 바라봤고 그리고 그리고 대전에 대해서 이렇게 설명을 좀 대전에 대해서 이렇게 설명을 좀 주셨는데 저는 우리 한국 한국이 스마트 시티가 정책이 어떻게 흘러왔고 그리고 이런 것들이 어떻게 어떤 사업들로 이제 중앙 정부 차원에서 그리고 저희 LH 차원에서 어떻게 추진을 하고 있는지에 대해서 좀 설명을 드리고자 합니다. 아, 어, 이거는 그 구글에서 2016년 10월까지에 대한 그 검색 트렌드를 이렇게 그래프로 표현을 한 겁니다. 그래서 최초에는 이 스마트 시티 이전에 디지털 시티라는 것이 이제 이슈화가 됐고요. 그 디지털 시티 같은 경우는 2000년 초에 그 기술적인 측면에서 스마트 시티가 진행되었다라고 볼 수가 있을 것 같습니다. 그 이후에 스마트 시티가 그 디지털 시티와 그 거버넌스라는 사람 중심이 스마트 시티 개념이 이렇게 전환되면서 스마트 시티로 명명이 됐고요. 저희 대한, 그러니까 한국에서는 스마트 시티가 2008년에 개념이 대두되기 시작했는데 그 이전에 2000년 초반부터 유시티라는 이름으로 스마트 시티를 시작을 해왔습니다. 그래서 유시티라는 이름으로 정책을 시작을 했고 ICT 관련한 도시적인 인프라들을 그 도시에 적용하기 시작했고 또 이와 관련해 가지고 세계 최초로 2006년 2008년 7년에서 8년 사이에 UCT 법이라는 세계에서는 아직 법 제도가 없는 걸로 알고 있는데 법을 제정을 해 가지고 이 스마트 시티를 추진할 수 있는 기반을 만들었습니다. 그래서 2008년부터 UCT에 관련한 그 정책들이 시행이 됐고요. 그런 와중에 이제 2012년부터 스마트 시티라는 UCT보다 조금 더 이제 거버넌스를 적용을 하고 사람 중심이 스마트 시티로 이렇게 나아가기 위한 더큰 개념을 차용하기 위해서 유시티라는 개념이 처음에 K-스마트 시티 그리고 이어서 스마트 시티로 개념이 바뀌어서 지금까지 스마트 시티 정책을 한국에서 지금 진행해오고 있습니다. 어 그리고 저희가 유시티 사업을 진행하면서 그 스마트 시티 즉 그러니까 ICT랑 정보 인프라 같은 경우는 이제 2003년 인천 자유경제 구역부터 시작해서 LH 흥덕, 흥덕 도시 택지개발 지구를 시작으로 해서 그 이후에 있는 그 신도시들 모든 도시와 그리고 기존 도시 안에서의 그 택지개발 지구에는 이 UCT 인프라와 스마트 시티 인프라가 2003년 이후부터 현재까지 그 모든 도시에 적용을 하고 있습니다. 그리고 그 이후에 한국에서는 이제 사업적인 측면에서는 도시개발 측면에서 접근을 했는데 그 스마트 시티 정책 차원에서는 국가 R&D 
그 R&D 사업으로 2013년에서 18년까지 진행이 돼서 그 R&D 사업 중심으로 진행이 됐고요. 그 이후에는 어 2000년 초반부터는 아 2010년 초반 때부터는 이제 민간 기업에서 스타트업이나 다양한 솔루션들이 공공과 민간과 이렇게 솔루션들이 어우러질 수 있는 방향으로 이렇게 진행이 되고 있습니다. 어 이거는 저희가 이제 한국에서 진행한 국가 스마트 시티 R&D인데요. 일단은 첫 번째가 일 단계로 유에코 시티라고 해서 2007년에서 13년도까지 진행을 했고요. 여기에는 그 통합 플랫폼, 그어 이제 통합 플랫폼을 여기서 개발을 해서 도시에 적용할 수 있는 방안들을 만들었고요. 그리고 여기서 법제도, 제가 아까 말씀드렸던 UCT 법을 이 시기에 이 국가 R&D를 통해서 제정을 하게 됐습니다. 그리고 이런 UCT에 관련한 그 인프라나 서비스들을 도시계획적인 차원에서 어떻게 적용할 것인가 라는 계획기준을 1단계 R&D에서 만들게 되었고요. 그리고 2단계 R&D 같은 경우는 1단계는 쉽게 얘기해서 이제 도시를 관제하고 특히 CCTV 중심의 관제를 통해서 그 도시를 관리하고 그, 데, 그 데이터 중심 데이터 들어오는 것들을 관리하기 위한 그 관주도의 그 탑다운식으로 도시 관제를 위한 방식이었다면은 이 단계에서는 이 탑다운의 관제 시스템에서 이제 주민이 체감할 수 있는 연계 서비스들을 연결해서 주, 그 서비스를 제공하는 시각으로 이렇게 이 단계. R&D가 진행되었습니다. 이 2단계 R&D가 아까 그 종전의 그 대전에서 말씀드린 5대 연계 서비스가 이 2단계 R&D에서 개발이 돼서 대전과 그 세종시에 옆에 있는 세종시에 테스트 베드로 구축이 되었고요. 그래서 5대 연계 서비스에서 특히 119 서비스는 2017년도에 그 IDC에서 최우수 솔루션으로 지정된 바 있습니다. 그리고 이와 더불어서 이제 지금까지 탑다운과 주민 체감형 그 R&D를 진행을 했다면 현재 3단계 그 R&D를 진행을 하고 있습니다. 작년 2018년부터 진행을 했는데 약 1,150억 원 정도의 사업비 그 연구비를 통해 가지고요. 어, 데이터 허브 즉 이제 바텀업 방식으로 민, 그 민간에서 그리고 주민들이 만들어지는 데이터들이 데이터 허브에 올라와 가지고 상위로 올라와서 그것들이 이제 도시 전반에 솔루션들로 연결될 수 있는 데이터 허브를 지금 구축하고 있고요. 어, 이와 더불어 이제 이렉심에서는 그 파트 원에서는 데이터 허브를 만들고 있고 이엑심에서는 이제 서비스 고도화를 위한 유스 케이스 실증 중심의 교통 안전 행정 중심의 이것들을 실증하는 연구를 지금 진행을 하고 있습니다. 그리고 삼 단계 같은 경우는 기술 혁신 및 창출을 위한 그 주민이 참여하는 리빙 렉 중심에서 그래서 바트업 차원에서 그일 단계 탑 타운까지 연결시키는 전체적인 R&D 프로세스가 이렇게 구조가 연결되고 있습니다. 그리고 저희 그 다음 그림은 저희가 이제 국가적으로 스마트 시티를 이렇게 지원하고 진행하고 정책적으로 이끌어가는 것들이 다양한 부처들이 있습니다. 저희 LH는 이제 공기관으로서 이제 국토교통부 그 몰트 그러니까 국토교통부 산하에서 실현하는 기관이고요. 그래서 국토교통부 외에도 안전행정부, 뭐그 과기정통부, 과학기술정통부 등이 다양한 부처에서 그 스마트 시티 정책을 추진을 하고 있고 각 정부 부처들을 모아서 그 스마트 도시 특별위원회라는 데에서 이제 컨트롤 타워를 이렇게 조정을 하고 있습니다. 그 중에서 제가 국토교통부의 사례만 조금 설명을 드리면요. 어 저희는 이제 2010, 어, 그 2018년 이전까지는 R&D 교, 중심으로 이제 사업 이제 정책을 추진을 했다라면은 2019년, 18년, 19년, 20년부터는 이제 그 정책들을 사업들을 이제 추출을 해가지고 실제로 이제 적용하고 있는 단계에 이르고 있습니다. 그 중에서 제일 첫 번째가 국가 시범 도시를 구축을 하고 있고요. 현재 한국에서 제시, 제시되고 있는 다양한 솔루션들을 이 국가 시범 도시에 그 규제라는 부분에 있어서 규제 샌드박스를 적용을 해서 규제를 제외하고 이렇게 적용할 수 있도록 그래서 모든 솔루션들을 이렇게 한 곳에 이렇게 밀집시켜서 스마트 시티 총사진을 제시할 수 있도록 국가 시범 도시를 LH에서 지금 구축을 하고 있고요. 그와 동시에 이제 시범 도시 전략 수립 그리고 시범 도시 콘텐츠 그리고 융합 얼리 얼라이언스 등 다양한 다양한 계획들을 지금 세우고 있습니다. 또한 이제 미래 전략 측면에서 아까 UCT법을 얘기를 말씀을 드렸는데 2017년에 UCT법을 스마트 도시법으로 개정을 했고요. 그리고 스마트 다양한 스마트 도시위원회 
그리고 규제 샌드박스 그리고 스마트 시티 챌린지 사업 같은 거 그리고 스마트 시티 특화 단지 같은 것들을 이렇게 구성을 하고 있고요. 국토교통부와 함께 이제 정책적인 측면에서 이제 사업적인 측면에서 지금 저희 회사에서 진행을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 18년도에 비해서 19년도 그리고 앞으로 20년도에는 이 스마트 시티에 관련한 지원 정책들에 대한 예산이 대폭 늘어날 예정입니다. 어 그리고 이거는 LH에서 하고 있는 사업들인데요. LH에서는 이제 스마트 시티를 이제 구축하기 위해서 신도시 개발뿐만이 아니라 이제 에코 시스템이나 그리고 다양 다양한 뭐 데이터 드리븐 스마트 시티, 그 데이터 드리븐 스마트 시티를 위해서 이제 LH, LH 갖고 있는 건축물 정보나 지역 정보들을 다양한 것들을 이제 LH 어반 플랫폼 같은 것들을 구축을 해가지고 지금 사업을 진행을 하고 있고요. 이거를 이제 중앙의 이제 통합 플랫폼이나 데이터 허브 같은 관제 솔루션으로 이제 연결해서 다양한 스마트 시티에 대한 데이터 서비스가 제공되리라 지금 기대를 하고 있습니다. 그리고 어, 국제 이제 네트워크들을 이렇게 어, 구축을 하고 있고요. 이와 관련해 가지고 지금 LH 같은 경우는 기준 도시에다가 뭐 이제 삼 기준 도시에 있어서 삼기 이제 저희 한국에서는 이제 수도권 중심에 서울의 과밀화가 있어서 삼기 신도시를 준비하고 있습니다. 그래서 삼기 신도시에 있어서는 스마트 시티 개념을 차용해서 스마트 시티 중심이 신도시로 지금 구축을 계획을 잡고 있고요. 그리고 국가적인 프로, 국가적인 시범 도시 세종 도시나 그리고 어 이제 어, 도시 재생에 있어서 스마트 도시 재생이라는 개념을 차용을 해서 도시 재생에 스마트 시티 솔루션들을 적용을 해서 진행하고 있, 있고 있습니다. 그래서 그러한 서비스들이 다양하게 나타나고 있는데요. 그래서 대한민국 전체에서 17개의 프로젝트로 그, 어, 뭐 스마트 라이팅이라든지 스마트 크로스 워크라든지 스마트 뭐 바이스크리라든지 다양한 솔루션들을 다양한, 다양한 지역에 지금 그 테스트 베드로 지금 적용을 하고 있고요. 그리고 또 22개의 하우징 프로젝트를 지금 진행을 하고 있는데 뭐 이제 광주 순 순운 지구 같은 경우는 이제 미세 먼지 뭐저뭐 저감 대책 그리고 어 성남시 같은 경우는 자율 주행 버스 같은 스마트 시티 솔루션들을 적용을 해서 지금 어 한국의 그 37개 테스트 베드를 지금 지, 어 구축을 하고 있습니다. 어 그리고 어 결과에 대해서 더 설명을 드려야 되는데 지금 시간이 좀 적은 것 같고요. 이후에 결과에 대해서는 어더 토론을 드리는 걸로 이렇게 하면서 이렇게 말씀을 드리도록 하고요. 하나만 더 말씀을 드리자면은 저희가 5대 연계 서비스 아까 대전에서 말씀 드셨 드려 드리셨던 이제 통합 플랫폼의 5대 연계 서비스를 이렇게 채용을 했을 때 실제로 지금 2년간 2년에서 3년 정도 대전과 세종에 지금 테스트 베드로 적용을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이런 서비스를 통해서 이제 안전 부분 이제 범죄율 같은 경우는 대략 10에서 15% 정도가 이제 절감되는 효과를 봤고요. 소방 같은 경우는 저희 가 골든 타임 출동 시간을 골든 타임을 5분 내로 하는데 그 5분 내에서 출동하는 시간도 저희 확보 시간도 비율이 계속 올라가고 있어서 이런 다양한 스마트 시티 솔루션이 지역 지자체나 뭐 이제 도시에 적용됐을 때 어떤 효과를 이뤄내고 그리고 주민들한테 어떤 서비스를 이렇게 이용하고 있는지에 대해서 지금 결과 많이 도출이 되고 있고요 이것들은 이후에 이제 토론 시간에서 이렇게 말씀드리도록 하겠습니다 이상입니다. 수고하셨어요. 네. Thank you for your presentation. Now we have done all the keynote speech and the panel presentation. Now, I'll, now I will, we have another 50 minutes to discuss upon about the, the, the subject we have to uh, deal with. Okay, let me show. We have three questions uh, in the same flow. Can you show me the questions on, on the screen? No, not yet. Okay, we have. Oh, the, this the first and second question, and even the third question was uh, were given by the panelist. <laughs> yeah, not not from the audience yet. Then uh, I, I will ask you to. Pose your question uh, by yourself. For example, uh, Yamashita Sensei, could you raise your question, please? 
to to main essence, main uh, contributor to the fireware is NEC, uh, the Nippon Electric Company. So that is the key issue for that that uh, the, the using utilization of this fireware. That fireware, fireware. Uh, maybe that's uh, my, my my answer to this question. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Could you use? I I can hear clearly. Thank you. It was it was my question, and and what I wanted to know is is where where was the problem actually? Yeah. It's, it's sometimes there is someone or a ministry or a department agreeing on using a solution, but then, for example, the energy sector is not very eager to share data. So if you have, for example, energy and sometimes also waste management, there is no memorandum of understanding to use this platform. So it's not a problem of the platform, but the problem of the governance model where you don't have an agreement prior to, to work with this data, so you cannot use it properly. I think the complexity of usage is another problem, but here I think it's within the governance model, that you need to have an, an agreement with all the players that you share the data. And the energy sector is not eager uh, yeah, to yes. share this data. Yes, I completely agree with your opinion. Yeah. and. Uh, so that uh, this is only the what's the experimental stage for the, the smart city policies in Japan. That I mean that the utilization of platform is uh, quite initial. Uh, it initiated pro, init, uh, it, what, first stage of the smart city policies. So maybe that such kind of what's say challenges and questions is maybe happened in the near future. In that time, the local government and also the other uh, actors can think what is a good solution, your best solution for the platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have the second question to uh, Mr. Chesuman. Yeah. Uh, the question is I would like to ask you is about some examples you could give us about uh, some further improvement that Tejan is going to or have received over the years. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your questions. Uh, we have uh, many, uh, uh, we have a planning to have some uh, uh, using the uh, data driven the civil service like the, if you want to, there was a traffic jam in the downtown of the Daejeon city, then we can use the uh, 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 big data and then we can uh, use the, where is the uh, place, the traffic jam, and then we uh, report to the drivers and then you can share the uh, informations real time. And then if there is uh, some accident in, ahead of you and then you have the reporting the that kind of so you can uh, another uh, load so that's the a kinds of uh, in the IOT and also uh, uh, big data uh, analysis uh, service so we have that kinds of preparing and also we have uh, drone uh, drone place you can use drone anytime and also the fire and the policemen they can use drone uh, safety the coughs and then they can use in that area and, and also other things. So, and also we have some uh, blockchain the system with the, like the, if you receive some documents from the academy, your graduate academy and also some government, you, you have to receive that kinds of documents. You can use your mobile phone very safely because we work together the SK Telecom and other system engineering company. And then we establish the systems. So you can very frequently and very usefully you can uh, receive your documents from the, your academy. 
or the university and college, and also you can receive the, from the government, local government. So that's very convenient for if the citizens need and the requirements, then we can share the systems and informations. But there is some hurdles and some regulations, but we are uh, 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 resolve that kinds of uh, regulations and some laws and some hurdles. So that's our some um, task to solve. Okay, thank you. Your question. Uh, I can add some comments upon the uh, data-driven ad administration in Daejeon uh, metropolitan. Uh, it is just the first stage, very pre preliminary and <laughs> first stage of uh, investigation. Because uh, our institute, ETRI, Electronic and Telecommunication Research Institute, also involved in uh, such as uh, citizen future services, uh, providing uh, big data technology and uh, artificial intelligence and so on. But during our discussion, uh, there are some issue, as you know, issue from uh, the data, uh, personal data, personal information, how, to, how we can open, what, which degree, how we can manage it, the, the data. So we have some technical issue to implement, realize the data-driven new administration services in Daejeon Metropolitan. And also, yeah. Professor, Professor Tiana also said uh, Finland is the most happiness the city, but second happiness and very safe <laughs> uh, downtown and city in Daejeon. And also we have a KAIST like the Stanford, <laughs> and also we ATRI is very famous national lab. And also, there is very good communi community. You can work together and share together. They are very sincere and very honest. So you can work together in Daejeon, the community, the smart city community, you can success. Thank you. Mm, thank you. Uh, may I, may uh, yeah, I sure, 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 yeah, freely. May yeah. I comment about the data and data-driven systems um, just shortly? I fully agree with actually um, the both of you were mentioning, but uh, maybe there's a danger that we uh, too much trust uh, for the uh, data systems. Uh, and thinking about that, there was a question about the energy sector and why actually this five-year system is not harvesting the data and why there is no trust with the energy companies. I think that we need to have the agreements. We need to create that trust at first and then we can share the data. So it's extremely Im important, uh, the, the human side uh, on, on these issues. Oh. oh, we have a list of questions. Uh, okay, the, the, the next one is to uh, Mr. Oh Myung Tech. Yeah? I, I have a friend who used to, to work in LH, in LH. He was a manager in UCT. He told me, frankly, a smart city implementation needs too much cost, and we are thinking whether smart city have enough advantages to spend for it. What would you be your opinion? <laughs> it costs so. Yeah, <laughs> 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 그 돈이 많이 든다고 했는데 기반 시설적인 차원에서는 우리가 이제 어 이제 도, 대 도시민 서비스를 무시할 수가 없습니다. 특히 이제 대전시 같은 경우는 안전 서비스가 되게 특화되어 있어서 5대 연계 서비스가 잘 적용되고 있는데요. 일단은 어그 이제 안전이라는 부분은 비용으로 이렇게 측정을 할 수가 없습니다. 그리고 향후에 이제 기반 시설이 구축이 된다면은 계속 지속적으로 업그레이드하고 그리고 이제 그 기회 비용에 대한 것들을 이제 충분히 뽑아낼 수 있다라고 하고요. 그리고 이러한 것들이 이제 비즈니스 모델로 창출이 돼서 꼭 이게 정부 예산만 들어가는 게 아니라 공공과 민간이 민간이 같이 해가지고 지금 이제 전체적으로 이제 스마트 시티 솔루션을 이제 적용해 나가는 그 이전에는 이제 우리나라가 이제 IT 분야에서 기반 시설 측면에서 굉장히 잘 구축되어 있었습니다. 그래서 이러한 바탕이 있는 거는 기반 시설에 대한 이제 예산을 이제 투자를 했고요. 
그리고 그거를 바탕으로 지금 이제 UCT 사업이나 이제 스마트 시티 사업, 뭐 데이터 보호 같은 이제 R&D 같은 것들이 적용이 돼가지고 솔루션이 지금 진행되고 있는데 꼭 이게 예산 투자뿐만이 아니라 이제 지역의 이제 스마트 시티 산업 전반적인 한국 기업들이나 해외 기업들에 대한 스마트 시티 산업이 발전할 수 있는 그러한 예산으로도 이제 파급 효과가 있기 때문에 꼭 이게 기회 그 비용 대비 뭐 적다 뭐 이런 것들은 좀 이렇게 말씀을 드리기보다는 향후의 미래에 대한 가치 그리고 미래에 대한 전략 측면에서 접근을 하는 게 맞지 않나라고 생각이 됩니다. 유 오디언스 유겟 디 앤서스 아우 썸 코멘트 플리즈 야 포스 just there are two comments first one and second please you know my comment like we started today with the keynote speaker from australia where he started with the definition of smart city to have a better quality of life and then we moved to Finland, where the education system is the like the student, they are the player of the future. And then the Japan terms of the smart society is good. Then finally we went to Korea with the story of the butterfly and the happiness. Uh, and you know, like the global innovation forum uh, theme is towards smart city. This reminds me with the, like who came first, the chicken or the egg? So my question is, or my comment, is the smart city will create the smart people and smart society or the other way around, the smart society will create the smart city? Thank you. Someone have an answer to the question? Which will force the smart society or smart city? <laughs> When you prepare your question, please, uh, second comment, please. My, my question is to is with regard to the presentation on Finland uh, regarding the smart city. Um, I enjoyed the presentation and even I'm excited about the fact to learn that there is um, a higher proportion of artificial intelligence concentrated within those areas. So here's the question. How are the citizens reacting to this high level of talent in artificial intelligence, machine learning? At the same time, how is Finland able to retain the talents without being poached by other cities? Yeah, thank you so much about the question. Um, uh, at, at first, actually, uh, I started with the, uh, this uh, Helsinki Espo area. It's very young area, so um, the average age is, I mean, 25 to 30 years old. Uh, it's very international uh, nowadays, uh, but it has lately became international meaning uh, in 20 to 30 years. So we were a very homogeneous uh, country, which uh, like Switzerland. Uh, Switzerland is nowadays very, very uh, heterogeneous. Uh, we are still homogeneous, but um, the, the, this area is in international. Uh, then uh, thinking about the knowledge, you asked that actually what the, um, the, the citizens uh, are thinking about uh, the area. Um, uh, I think actually earlier on it was actually the own bubble, uh, this university, uh, state research center, high-tech uh, area, uh, there's big companies, there's startups and, and on onwards. But now actually uh, because we got it uh, late, the metro, and there is now actually in the area build the houses, which is extremely important. So urban planning is extremely important. So there is uh, the dynamism uh, uh, in in the area, uh, and you meet uh, the you know um, whoever there are. I mean, occasionally or, or, or randomly, but also I mean purposely. So I think that actually I mean there is no issue about actually I mean you know. Um, uh, the, uh, about the talent. Uh, I think that, I mean, we are so, um, 
so equal so that, I mean, in, we don't have hierarchies in that sense, so that uh, uh, there is not that kind of setup. Of course, we have had the pilots, uh, if we are thinking machine learning and artificial intelligence, even in the city, uh, for the healthcare services, because healthcare is, of, of course, I mean, we need to have the more personalized healthcare services. But, I mean, there comes actually what the professor was just mentioning about the ethical issues, I mean, uh, of the data. So, uh, there has been an, a bit issues, a discussion about the ethics. And that's actually excellent, and we should actually continue that discussion. There's a lot of issues on those, and, 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 and we should drive that. Um, our further colleagues, I mean, in uh, Estonia and onwards, they are driving in Europe the discussion about e ethical, actually, uh, approaches. So, so there is a lot of issues. Thank you for the question. I mean, it's not so simple. So, uh, but we are very happy, I mean, uh, so far so good, but actually in these issues we discussed yesterday a, a lot about actually, I mean, it, it needs intelligent decision makers, it needs, I mean, responsible decision makers, it needs responsible coders, I mean, and, and, and engineers as well. And that's the, actually the worrying things, I mean, also, I mean, in the future, because we can change the world, but who is changing the world? That's maybe the issue. So, thank you. He asked yes. the, the question, the, the gentleman. So, do you have any answer to that, the first question? No? no? My, I have my personal personal uh, opinion. It's it's very personal. I have a chance to investigate the two major smart city project in Korea, Sejong uh, Sejong City and Echo Delta City, where is my hometown. <laughs> then, the, uh, f uh, for the first two uh, years, even now, uh, our issue is uh, is uh, um, observe. No, no. Our, our main issue was not the technology, not the AI, not the smart city infrastructure, but the community itself. That, that was the, our major concern. How we can construct the community for the for the new comers, new new residents in the in this uh, smart city? Maybe it could be uh, some of your uh, answer to your question. Okay. Oh, uh, I have a. I'm so happy to <laughs> many people. Uh, okay, please. May, yeah. may I? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, okay. Yeah. My name is Maldaner from, from Brazil. And I have to say that I have been in the John uh, several times from 2007 until now. And uh, what I'm seeing in the John is that uh, it's improving a lot in infrastructure. We can see a lot of squares, nice squares. This, this week is a flower festival and a lot of people walking around. But uh, what is, in my opinion, is uh, I think some kind of problem. You are having too much cars in the, on the streets, too much cars and uh, we cannot see any bike, any bicycles, uh, and we have a, a lot of uh, parks that we can uh, uh, ride a bike, and I cannot see any bike. There is a problem where the people don't like to bike, or there is some lack, uh, lack of incentive to use bikes in the John. Thank you for your ask, uh, question, and uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, there is, you cannot find the uh, uh, bicycle and other, too much uh, the traffic jams. But uh, we will prepare uh, about uh, some information and for tourists and some visitors, and then we can share the app. You can, you can use mobile app very frequently and very uh, efficiently. So next time, if you come, that will be solved. <laughs> Please come to next year, okay? Uh, yeah. Just one comment. Uh, very, uh, uh, we, in Daejeon, we have a public uh, bicycle services called Tashu. Tashu means ride in, uh, in, uh, in Korean. Tashu. Uh, that service has been launched, launched uh, 15 years ago. 
but the number of bicycles we manage actually is very small. So your comment is very uh, correct in this sense. Yeah. We have uh, some problems. You have to uh, the, wear the, the you know the bike the caps, but the bike caps uh, lost yeah, yeah. Oh, many times lost. Yeah, so yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. And also uh, information is very limited. So next time we will. Uh, solve the kinds of problem. Okay, thank you. Police gentlemen, you have raised. Yeah, um, thank you very much. My name is Umar Bindi from Nigeria. Uh, and I've been coming to Dejon for a very long time, many years. And uh, it's interesting, and I thank you all for the presentation that your session literally is to portray projects on smart city and some evaluation of impacts and outcomes. My question is to Professor Su. Uh, on one of your maps, there is arrows showing. Yeah, I've already asked you that. There is one of your maps showing arrows partnering with literally all the continents, but the arrow has not gone to Africa south of the Sahara. Um, I'm sorry. What, that. what do you need to do that so that one day? Either Kenya or Lesotho or Nigeria can also come here and say smart city projects, impacts and outcomes, please. Okay. Thank you for your questions. Uh, I'm very sorry about that. My steps mistake. <laughs> I, I ask to reach out each member of this WTA. So uh, our De Dejan Techno Park and also the Dejan Metropolitan, you are going to the, this next month, the Ghana and other countries for this kinds of smart city and also drone the industries get together. No, that's the mistake. I'm very sorry about that. Thank you for uh, asking that. Okay. Uh, do you have any question and comment in the audience? I have another uh, question. Oh, over there. Second time. <laughs> you, please. There is actually a connection between what Korea is doing with regard to smart city and Kenya. So there are projects that are ongoing. They just need to be connected. The other thing that I want to comment on is very interesting in response to the question about whether it is smart city that make for smart people or smart people that create smart city. And also the presentation in Finland, there is a connector here that we need to pay attention to, the community. If we go back to uh, how Korea transformed itself, the Semua Udon projects is similar to the community-based approach to smart city in Helsinki. And so we need to really take seriously the idea that people working together within their own community can come up with the ideas on how to transform intelligently their communities for effective living in the 21st century. Thank you.
이렇게 결점이 없도록 이렇게 진행할 수 있도록 이렇게 주민 참여형으로 이렇게 가야 되는 게 맞을 것 같고요. 이런 것들에 대한 의견들을 실제로 이제 스마트 시티 솔루션 정책 입안자나 개발자들은 귀 기울여서 이것들을 반영을 해야 되고, 그리고 또 이제 정부나 지자체에서는 이것들이 뭐 규제 등뭐 이런 것들에 있어서 이것들이 자리 잡고 또 실험하고 그리고 상용화 될수 있도록 이런 거버넌스 체계가 가장 스마트 시티에서는 중요하다고 생각을 합니다. 그래서 그런 측면에서 현재 어 이제 한국 스마트 시티 정책 방향은 기존에는 이제 기술 개발이 중심이었지만 지금은 주민과 함께 그리고 개발자와 함께 그리고 지역의 정부와 함께 같이 만들어 가지고 적용하고 피드백할 수 있는 그러한 체계를 지금 만들 만들어 가고 있습니다. 그래서 내년에는 국토교통부에서는 이제 리빙랩을 굉장히 중요시하고 있어서 이런 네트워크를 국내에서 전체적으로 꾸릴 예정이고요. 그리고 이런 것들을 뭐 이제 교수님도 아시겠지만은 뭐 엔놀이나 뭐 이런 유럽 그 리빙랩 그 네트워크에 연결을 해가지고 이제 전 세계적으로 이렇게 연결을 해서 서로 실증해 보고 교차 실증해 보고 이러한 단계들을 계속 밟아 나갈 예정입니다. 이상입니다. I add some comment upon that uh, answers. In the early uh, 2000s, uh, Korea has, uh, has started uh, the UCT project. And we have a lesson to learn from this UCT project. We tried, we, at the time, we tried to uh, apply the new ICT technology, information and communication technology to our residents. So the, the result was not mm, so happy <laughs> because when you apply a new technology in the, in the city, you should maintain it cost, it, it, it make a, another additional cost, but the government support has stopped and the, the new technology became old, old, some, <laughs> old some technology now. So in, in the new uh, initiative, a smart city initiative, as I already mentioned, we, uh, we observed, we insist the community and the life of uh, uh, quality of life and, and so on. This is the first item we should uh, regard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have two questions to my Taina. Taina. Yeah. C could you uh, show me the last two questions left for her? Then, uh, then I, I, I will read to you. You mentioned about the initiatives, initiatives for medium-sized sized cities in U, EU, European Union. Can you, where is it? Can you elaborate about how this is going on? Yeah. Uh, First. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, there, uh, I was mentioning this um, uh, digital city challenge, and, and that's actually the uh, European uh, Union launched the challenge uh, for all the cities, but basically for the smaller cities. And there, the purpose was to actually to learn. And, and, and in Europe, we have actually huge amount of the small cities. The, the call was there was I mean, a hundred of cities applying, and 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 they, then they selected around twenty or something, and I remember in that time also the uh, my home city was Espo was applying, and it goes align very nicely what you just said, actually about you know. Um, uh, in, in, in Finland, um, we are very um, uh, IT savvy, but not in public sector. Uh, the city do have it, the information systems, but uh, we see also that uh, there's uh, lots of things that y you can do it better. Uh, okay, they applied, but I mean, the, uh, the response was that, no, you are too good. So, I mean, you are not qualified. And uh, the, uh, but, the solution was, of course, there was 20 cities selected, uh, kind of latecomers, uh, but uh, they took it also the mentoring cities. So it created a network, nice network, uh, with around uh, 30 to 40 cities, uh, uh, which is actually, yeah, around. And, and, and basically, that was the collaborative uh, process, uh, two years. 
and 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 peer to peer learning and what they learned about it of course i mean the key learnings were that i mean um that uh, you need to put the citizens uh, in the center um and 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 it it came actually out that you need to set the ambitions vision and 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 targets and then you need to actually to look uh, uh the big picture at first and then actually the build uh, the the community build the uh, stakeholders around you um, uh, and also actually I mean uh, learn from each others uh, there were of course I mean uh, details but they those were the may, maybe the basically the I biggest issues I mean that uh, uh, they learned, and of course, uh, the, there was a previous question, it, which is uh, about the talents. How do you actually, I mean, maintain the ta talent? That's the issue everywhere. So that how do you upskill and how do you attract the talent? And that actually made the, uh, the, the next call, what, which I was presenting here, that about. So they decided because it was so successful to continue that uh, that they n now have it. 100 cities uh, challenge uh, beginning of 2020 and of, uh, now actually they're in this initiative they hope that to have it you you guys <laughs> involved I mean outside of Europe which is extremely important sometimes the European Union initiatives are just for the Europe which is not nice because we need to I mean uh, the, uh, uh, understand uh, the global picture and and that's now now coming on that uh, that setting so Thank you. Thank you for the question. Naturally, you can, uh, we can go the last question to you. Yeah? How to use the, the cooperation between universities and the business organization for your smart city? I, 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 will, I will trust uh, twist a little discussion like this because I have a, uh, one question to you. Uh, in your abstract, you have mentioned that very interesting model, quadruple helix model, which includes research institute and uh, cooperate and also accelerate and start up. My question is, uh, which, which entity is, uh, is most uh, a place, which, which entity between these four uh, does play the most important roles in, in your Helix model. It's a little difficult, but I personally want to know which one is the most most important. Um, uh, this this is maybe the most uh, difficult one, and it depends actually which perspective you take it. Uh, thinking about the collaboration um, now, it seems that um, you need to. I mean, uh, we talk about community. We talked about spaces and places. So, I mean, what we have found out that we I mean, need to have those kind of spaces and places where people are coming, the right people, and then actually uh, there is uh, uh, becoming uh, new ideas, new actions uh, uh, created and on, so forth. So, I mean, everything cannot be planned, I mean, as I mean, systematically. So that's maybe actually our learnings. Um, uh, of course, you need to have the targets, but uh, many things are uh, 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 done in collaboration and it's not so clear who is driving and it should not be an issue neither that who is driving i think so that it, it's even more wiser to be actually there on the uh, uh, on the seats to 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 make it possible and that's maybe for the uh, public sector the biggest issue uh, uh, the, for the cities because the cities are not creating the value the businesses are creating the value and, 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 and cities cannot dominate. They need to enable uh, or unable uh, the businesses to do that. Uh, the scientists uh, and, and, and whoever is the inventors to create the new things. And how do you make it happen? That's actually $100 I mean, dollar question. I mean, um, I don't know that we have a silver bullet. Uh, uh, and, and, and maybe that's also context dependent very much that actually uh, what is working where and how. Uh, but at least in our environment, which is where there is no hierarchies, you cannot actually with the hierarchies actually to make it happen, you need to put the people actually, I mean, voluntarily uh, uh, on, on, on spot. 
I ask the discussion because in, uh, in the National Smart City Project in Sejong, more or less we are focusing on the startup, startup activities there. Yeah, that's why I asked you. Okay. Anyway, adding to uh, some this uh, uh, answers. Uh, yeah. Is it okay? Okay. Well, go. Question, comment, please, dear, yeah. please. You, you, you have a last question left, yeah? Okay, thank you very much uh, for all uh, panel member. Uh, I have a question. Actually, we have two direction. One direction is uh, government and the private sector, and the other side is the citizen to make a smart city. Most uh, discussion uh, is focus how government and pri uh, government uh, and private sector companies how we can make a smart city. Maybe in following his uh, comment, uh, I couldn't see much uh, discussion about how can we make citizens to be smart and how can get help from the citizen to make a smart city. So maybe a smart city is not just we try to implement a technology in a city to make a smart services for citizens. And citizens just look at the services, give it to me services, and then we make a criteria to check this city is smart or that city is smart, whether citizen is happy, just citizen get the services. Why don't we spend some effort and energy to make the citizen to be involved to uh, maybe citizen be a smart or some helping. Maybe uh, if the citizen to be involved, we do not need uh, much uh, complex technology. With simple technology, we can make a smart city with the little help of the citizen. Thank you. It may be comment. Uh, do you have any comment upon the question? Because you have many experience. <laughs> Thank you so much for your comment. I totally agree with your comment. Yes, you uh, mentioned about mutual relation between the uh, civil society and uh, ICT or uh, technological development. So I think that the demand for the technology is a first. Maybe so, such as elderly care, the people don't walk in, uh, they can't walk, can go out, uh, so they need to transport to the uh, public center or some other things, but it's quite difficult. In such case, that the city government uh, applied how to solve such kind of personal problem. So, such uh, in such situation, maybe that that uh, at ICT and other technology can help the personal uh, the demand. I mean, if that person has some problem, not just waiting for government to give uh -huh. the smart. Uh -huh. He can ask some human beside him to help him uh -huh. uh, some way of technology using some, I mean, using the potential of the human. Yes. We're just waiting for some technology come from government or company side. We yeah. don't care about the potential of human being and citizen in a smart city. I didn't see any discussion about that. I uh -huh. feel we need a little bit change the direction. Uh -huh. But uh, I mentioned about the Takama City's cases and also that the other cases is uh, Tokyo area. The University of Tokyo and other uh, the private uh, uh, real estate company to solve the, such kind of demand. Maybe uh, I've said it that uh, well, uh, early care solution. But in such case, the demand is first. So that uh, the real estate company and the local government make one, let's say, uh, the database, uh, data storage for everyone. And the people can uh, ask their demand on that uh, the data storage. So that the government or a uh, private company pick up such a uh, demand and they uh, give that sense solution for the elderly, uh, uh, every one of them at the local community. Is that is uh, one, uh, maybe it's, uh, that's the answer to you. Mm. And also, 
her nice presentation, she, she has already uh, give some uh, solution, solution uh, answer to that question. Uh, the uh, the uh, is to develop uh, their own neighborhood. It's a very nice sentence I do remember. Yeah? Th thank you. And if I may comment, uh, of course, I mean, uh, excellent question. Um, and maybe that's the target of this, uh, so to say, smart cities. I, I don't like the term smart city because, I mean, nobody wants to be stupid. Uh, so everybody wants to be smart. So what is the differentiating factor? But uh, thinking about uh, this, uh, th this is very difficult, even though, I mean, you have the initiatives going on uh, to involve. We have lots of initiatives. For example, we have the initiative that if you see any problems in your city, just take the photo and send to the mayor. Uh, and, and people do. We have a mechanism to influence and, and onwards. We have NGOs working for the... Um, uh, doing the applications, I mean, for the city uh, 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 and, and onwards. But, I mean, to get everybody involved, get the feeling, get the community, it's extremely difficult. So, I mean, uh, I really actually value every city who can make it. I mean, uh, uh, please tell your stories and share those because that's very important. I mean, uh, how do you do it uh, to, to others to learn? Okay, thank you. Uh, we, we have another 10 minutes. Oh, 저기 그 한국 분한테 우리 젊은 학생 같기도 하고. 예. 편하게 uh, 질문하세요. 예. So a techno uh, technological trend by some companies such as Google seem to be implementing uh, some technologies and molding them into people's lives in an integral way. Uh, a consequence of this may be that people may miss some technological capabilities. So do you think that the technologies implemented in smart cities are being used to their full potential? Uh, the kitchen, kitchen, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think, it, uh, generally speaking, there are four different positions about the kitchen. For example, for, uh, the businessmen are very, uh, uh, very, uh, Mm, uh, positive to that uh, uh, apply the new technology in uh, in smart city or others area, and also like me, some uh, some scientist or engineer, they are also very uh, friendly with new technology to apply everywhere smart city and <laughs> others. But there are another position, the uh, for, for example the the, the government. Uh, uh, economist or social, so, social, so, social, or even uh, the equist, the the, the 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 organization who, who uh, protect the, the natural environment, they have a very uh, reserved position about that question. So it depends on the group of uh, uh, professional. That, that's, the, uh, that's my general comment upon the questions. Do you have any? <laughs> uh, I have prepared some questions for, for panelists uh, and the, the keynote speakers. Uh, two, two questions to uh, Yamashita Sensei, Yamashita Jun Sensei, and one general question for, for all the uh, participants. Yeah? Uh, when you present the current challenge in uh, Japan, yeah, uh, you, you the, the current ch challenge is also for also in Korea. Uh, uh, that's this one. Uh, decline the birth rate, aging and the shrinking population. Yeah, you have uh, quite uh, some achievement to resolve this problem uh, through the smart city project. Uh -huh. So uh, I, I would like to ask, uh, ask you to uh, give some, uh, some concrete example for that uh -huh. resolve, because our society is following yours 10 years after. <laughs> this problem became very serious, even at this moment very serious to that means this is a uh, current challenge even for Korean society, yeah. 
And the, 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 the question is two gentlemen, uh, Mr. Oh Myung Tech and uh, uh, Yamaguchi uh, Sensei. Uh, you, you have a present, uh, presented the Japanese policy and Korean police. Could you uh, make uh, some comparison with these two, uh, two policy, national policy, the common point or different point or some, something uh, to learn from each other? Yeah, that's, that's the second question. So thank you for your comment. It's maybe the drone use for the delivery service is one of them. So that's uh, the Japanese population is shrinking. So there is uh, less that uh, what a working population. So that we also face that increase in the transport cost and also that the uh, human cost. So maybe the drone use and also automatic driving uh, the delivery service is one of them. So this is only the experiment stage, but some cities try to use such kind of drone uh, delivery and also that uh, in, a, in, a, in, in a couple of years, the automatic vehicle deliveries. That's a, uh, the concrete example, I think. Thank you. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not familiar with the, the Korean cases. Maybe that he <laughs> gives a, what's a, what's a proper answer to this question, I think. Uh, <laughs> 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 우리 한국 같은 경우 이제 신흥국에서 이제 개발 도상국에서 이제 신흥국 측면에서 이제 접근을 하고 있는데 그러기 위해서 저희가 이제 거점 개발들을 그동안 도시 계획이나 도시 개발에 있어서 많이 진행돼 왔습니다. 그런 의미에서 스마트 시티도 좀 이제 그러니까 정부 차원에서 탑다운 방식에서 시작을 했고 지금 이제 바텀업 방식으로 이제 접목해 나가고 있는데 일본 같은 경우는 이제 도시 계획이나 도시 개발 또 특히 스마트 시티 기술 접목해서 스마트 빌리지 쪽에서 굉장히 많이 이렇게 진화하고 기술 개발되어 있고 그리고 이러한 빌리지 측면에서 대 케어 서비스들이 굉장히 잘 되고 있다라고 생각을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 그런 점에 있어서 일본 사례들이 많이 이제 본받을 점이 있을 것 같고요. 그리고 한국 한국 정책에서 장점 아, 일단 단점을 하나 좀 꼽아 볼 수가 있을 것 같아요. 단점이라는 거는 뭐냐면은 어, 어떻게 이건 단점이 단점이라고 볼 수는 없을 것 같은데 일단 스마트 도시 스마트 시티가 이제 그 출범한 개념이 이제, 자, 이제 도시화의 증가로 인해서 거기에 따른 이제 환경 문제, 뭐 인구 문제, 뭐 교통 문제에 대한 솔루션들을 이제 ICT 개념을 이제 해가지고 해결하는 개념으로 이제 시작을 해서 아까 첫 번째 그 말씀처럼 뭐 이제 시민 시민이 스마트한 것이냐 아니면 도시가 스마트해진 거냐에 대한 그 연장선상으로 좀볼수 있을 것 같은데요. 처음에는 도시가 스마트하게 발전을 하다가 이 시민들도 우리 인류도 계속 이제 진화하는 과정에서 굉장히 빠른 속도로 이그 첨단 도시에 적응을 해나가고 있습니다. 그러면서 저희가 이제 스마트 시티 정책을 추진하거나 솔루션을 적용하는 입장에서 제일 힘든 부분이 뭐냐면은 시민의 발전 속도가 이제는 스마트 시티의 기술을 접목하는 속도 이상으로 되게 빠르다라는 생각을 많이 하고 있습니다. 그래서 이러한 솔루션들을 지역이나 뭐 도시에 접목을 했을 때 실제로 시민들의 반응은 반응에 있어서는 어 이거는 있을 법한 한 건데 어 이거는 기존에 어 있는 건데 이렇게 좀 해서 기술 속도가 전에는 그러니까 도시가 시민들을 이렇게 이끌어 왔다면은 이제는 시민들이 도시를 이렇게 어, 그 발전을 이끌어 간다라고 이렇게 말씀을 좀 드리고 싶고요. 이러한 측면에서 이제 그 시민 참여 위주의 이제 스마트 시티 솔루션들을 개발하는 정책이 지금 이제 좀 이제 자리 잡고 있어서 그런 부분에 있어서 예, 그좀 이렇게 장점이라고 좀볼수 있고 이런 것들이 전 세계적인 그 도시 나아가는 패러다임이다라고 이렇게 말씀을 드리고 싶습니다. 뭐, 이 정도 하겠습니다. Uh, adding to this uh, Korean policy, the I'm in the Techno Park. Techno Park is established 20 years ago. The national government, the policy always preparing 20 years. It takes 20 years. And also, this kind of Techno Park, the agency, is between the local government and the public side and the business side and also citizen side. We can work together. Even though 
working with the academy and also. So if you uh, adapt this kinds of the techno park, uh, also top down, but we can share the bottom up uh, through the techno park and also uh, ubiquitous city. The Korean policy already, uh, already uh, 2008 or seven around that period, uh, including the Dr. Kim also working together there at Tree, and also that's the. It took more than 10 years. Yeah, smart city. So it takes times, and also recently the citizens' participation is more important than anything. And also the mobile and other app is very frequently you can use. The startup, the big company is not uh, innovative, but startup, small companies, they are very innovative and very, startups are very smart and they, they can uh, use their requirements and also citizens' requirements. So work together, startup. So Finland is very famous to the startups in Korea too. So if you uh, some uh, adapt to that kind of uh, systems, you can share that kind of experience and the cases. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. Oh, I so appreciate the, the Japanese plan, Smart City, because it is based on the Society 5.0. When I re re read that uh, report, uh, it is very concrete. Uh, they are, uh, the challenging is the aging society, uh, how they resolve the aging society. And so, for example, they want to develop some care, care robots to resolve such a, such a problem. Very concrete and the goal is very uh, well directed. In this sense, uh, this is the base of the smart city in Japan. That, that uh, yeah, and my uh, my understanding is correct. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, I said I had a, uh, one open question to all the panelists and the speakers, but it's uh, almost at the time uh, of lunch time, so I only ask the last question, but uh, I do not uh, wait your answer. Answer should give, be given uh, by yourself. Uh, several, several months ago, I invited my wife to go uh, to move the smart city in Sejong in the near future after my, if I take my retirement. She definitely said, no, 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 I don't want. There are some new technologies, some uh, health care, etc., etc., and the, the un unmanned vehicle, etc., etc., but she said, no, no, because she won't keep her privacy. <laughs> yeah. So my uh, open question is, in the smart city in Finland or in Japan or in, even in Korea, the most important uh, thing is the citizens' security matter. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Che Suman ha have, uh, has a, you know, some example in Daejeon, but I insist the security matter is the most important thing uh, in, the smart, in the future smart city. And I thank all of uh, the, the ladies and gentlemen on the stage, and, uh, and also I appreciate so much the audience uh, give uh, many questions and uh, valuable comments. Have a nice lunch, and uh, have a nice stay again. Thank you very much. Dr. Kim as a moderator and all the panelists, thank you very much for your um, participation, presentations and answers for the questions. Please give them another big hand for the useful and meaningful time. Thank you very much. Before we end up this session, I have a quick announcement to make. Luncheon is prepared at the room 202. Room 202, please proceed to room 202 for the lunch. And in the afternoon, there will be a various programs in the exhibition hall and first floor. From 1.30, there will be a UW workshop, which delivers presentations of the best practices by country. For those of you participating UNESCO WTA workshop, we'd appreciate if you could participate. And also on the first floor, thematic special sessions A to D will be given. Thank you very much for your participation and support and have a great time for the lunch and we will have the 
plenary session three at here at four o'clock. Thank you.